Mm. Uh, what I will do now, I will continue. I will continue uh, on the, to talk on the subject. To talk on the subject, and then when we start to fall asleep, our lunch, you know, takes full force, <laughs> and then uh, see, uh, you know, the uh, maybe we'll have some questions to, you know, to uh, wake us up. Uh, so first, I will continue to talk on the subject. Uh, so the, the the point I was making uh, in the uh, the morning session was that you know us to have the mind going for refuge. Uh, of course, there are many you know uh, causes and conditions which will benefit to us to have this mind, but uh, out of those uh, many causes and conditions, two causes which are extremely relevant, useful and helpful uh, uh, are the, those uh, which I explained earlier and understanding, the understanding the nature of our uh, present existence and then the second cause is the understanding the three jewels Buddha, Dharma and Sangha and uh, you know the I was talking uh, the first one uh, the understanding you know the the nature of our present existence and uh, the first point I made uh, connection to that is this uh, great Indian master uh, the Sri Lankan master Rahula is based on his book that he you know the uh, he, he, he gave these three features, these three features which are features or three sort of, you know, uh, things happening or uh, here within us, you know, the uh, attraction or enjoyment, uh, you know, the, then the second one is, you know, the uh, Unsatisfactoriness, unsatisfactoriness, and the third one is liberation or freedom. Uh, so that was the first point uh, I, I, uh, I tried to, you know, to share with you, saying, you know, try to understand, uh, try to contemplate, try to see, you know, the every event we engage in every object that we have, uh, every, you know, the uh, activities that we, uh, you know, the uh, enter into, you know, the try to see these three uh, natures. There is attraction, there is a, uh, also, you know, the uh, repulsion or the you know, unsatisfactory, unsatisfactoriness, and also liberation, liberation. Uh, so that was the, my first point. Now I want to go more in the, uh, on that point which I briefly made earlier. The understanding of uh, these two causes uh, is extremely relevant to study, to understand the Buddha's first teaching, the Four Noble Truths. So I want to uh, go, uh, you know, say briefly on that. Now the first two noble truths, noble truth of dukkha, dukkha, or noble truth of suffering, which translated in English, although the English um, English term suffering uh, seems, uh, you know, the, uh -huh, you know the. Uh, seems it doesn't have the 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 ability to capture to capture the full meaning of in Sanskrit dukkha in in in, in Tibetan uh, dungel you know dungel but uh, you know the that uh, the suffering is used here you know the uh, 
in English now, you know, quite a uh, well-established term uh, here, uh, you saying noble truth of suffering. Uh, that's the first noble truth, noble truth of suffering, noble truth of Dukkha. Now when Buddha taught this, the first noble truth, uh, he said, you know, the, there is a Dukkha, there is a Dukkha, you know, there's a uh, suffering within us. And that's what he said first, in the first relation to the first noble truth, what he said, there's a Dukkha, there's a suffering. And that is really, really important. It, it, it sounds, it is very silly, you know, say, oh, there's a Dukkha. Yes, we all know there's a Dukkha, there's a suffering. It sounds immediately, it sounds very silly uh, statement, but actually, you know, it is a very, very important statement for us, you know, to understand the, the nature of our existence, you know, fully and completely. You know, the understanding uh, half or partial or just bits of, you know, the, 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 the nature of our life, uh, lives is not that useful, helpful. It is good to have the full understanding, you know, complete understanding. And uh, this statement, you know, saying uh, there is a Dukkha, uh, that is a very, very, you know, the uh, important statement for us to understand the full nature of our existence. Because our, you know, the understandable, our usual, you know, the uh, uh, habit is we don't want to see, we don't want to know the difficult sides of the things and events, including in our, you know, the, the, our life it, uh, itself. We want only to see the, the, the nicer sides or the, you know, the happier part. We don't want to see the difficult part. We don't we want to ignore that. Or if we, want, if, we, if we can, we want to avoid that. And that is our, you know, the present uh, habits. And that quite often, you know, the, uh, but that habit that, uh, you know, the, quite often cause us, uh, you know, the, uh, cause us not to see the full nature, you know, the, uh, uh, of the uh, nature of our, uh, our existence. So this statement, the first statement saying, there's a Dukkha, there's a Dukkha, just simply saying there's a Dukkha. And as a follower of Buddha, you know, that, that reminding to ourselves, the life that we have and life that other people, other beings have, there is a Dukkha. Not saying, you know, the cause Dukkha, not saying experience Dukkha, it's saying to understand that. There's a dukkha. And that is very useful to ourselves, and also it is very useful to cultivate sympathy, empathy, understanding of other living beings, you know, the, towards other living beings. If we understand there's a dukkha, you know, there's a suffering. Uh, then the second, in the second statement, relation to the first noble truth, he said, it should be fully understood. That dukkha should be fully understood, not partially, not some part, but fully and completely. Uh, now here, then the, 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 the important part is, you know, the when we talk about dukkha, when we talk about suffering that we enjoy, that we experience, you know, there are different layers, different levels of dukkha, suffering. Some are physical, some are mental. You know, the, uh, in the both cases, physically, physical difficulty, 
as well as uh, mental difficulties. Again, there are different layers. Some are you know, easy to understand as a dukkha and not that difficult to avoid or you know, the, uh, be free from. Some are difficult to understand as a dukkha. Instead of as a dukkha, we may see them as a, some kind of desirable. We may see some of them as a, something I like to have it. You know, so there are different layers of dukkha. And that is here, he said, it should be fully understood. So the, you know, the uh, going for refuge, going for refuge to the three jewels, the, the, the one of the main causes is understanding dukkha, relation to one's own life, fully and completely will be the one out of those two causes, the main cause, one of the main cause, causes, fully. So with that, I want to just, I will not go that, that detail, but uh, many of you may know, but I want to uh, not say this. Uh, hmm? uh, conception, the conception of Dukkha may be viewed from three aspects. Three aspects. So three aspects in the sense of three sort of different levels, three different levels. The first one, dukkha, suffering, dukkha as an ordinary suffering. And in Sanskrit, or in, in a, uh, it says dukkha, dukkha, or quite often in English translated suffering of suffering. In other words, very gross, very obvious, you know, the, even in certain cases, animals, birds, they can understand this is not necessarily the word dukkha, something to be avoided. And they also try to avoid and be able to, you know, temporarily be able to escape from that kind of unpleasantness, difficulties. So that layers of difficulties that we experience is, you know, from time to time. The dukkha, the difficulties that, you know, very obvious, very clear as a, you know, something I want to be avoided, I want to be escaped from that. And that is the, the first aspect or the first layers of dukkha. To do that, we don't need Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. Particularly here, people who are following, you know, they want to follow Buddha Dharma. To escape that kind of very obvious dukkha, very obvious dukkha, don't need, you know, to go for refuge. Without the refuge, going for refuge, we can be, you know, free from that kind of obvious difficulties, the dukkha. Then the second aspect here, dukkha, as a produced by change. Dukkha or suffering as produced by change or sometimes in English translated, translated saying you know the uh, suffering of change, suffering of change. You know the certain events, certain objects, certain things initially appear to us as a, some kind of desirable we like to have it. And uh, initially that may produce, that may give us sense of enjoyment, sense of, you know, the uh, pleasure. But when time passes, when situation changes, that object, that event, that thing, that person, you know, they may give us unpleasantness. We want to avoid instead of get closer or we, instead of uh, collecting the object we want to you know they want to separate it from us 